Hi everyone, and welcome to the third episode of The Light Within Us, a podcast for empaths navigating the human experience together. Thanks for tuning in again and joining me for this third app. Today I wanted to chat about why it's difficult for empaths to leave toxic relationships. And I'm not particularly talking about romantic relationships, but rather uh, other types of rela relationships that are important for us in our lives, like friendships, relationships with the co-workers or mentors, and people we know in general. So before I go into why it's hard for us as empaths to leave toxic relationships, I want to talk a bit more about what and who empaths are. So I assume a lot of you already know, especially if you believe you are an empath, you're probably well aware of what it means to be an empath. But um, if you're not, and if this is one of the first times that you're hearing the word, and if you're not clear about what it means, then let me give you a bit of background about empaths or highly sensitive people. So the first reference I want to make here is to Dr. Elaine Aaron, who wrote this book in the 90s after extensive research. It was about um, a subset of personality type uh, called highly sensitive persons or highly sensitive people. And these people she observed uh, seem to be uh, easily overwhelmed by um, strong inputs or um, stimulation. They tended to be very sensitive to other people's moods, to pain. They needed to withdraw more often, um, so they tended to be more introverted. Um, and um, they would easily get overwhelmed by things like bright lights, big crowds, um, uh, strong sounds and smells and so on. So I mean, those are only some of the characteristics. If you're familiar with Dr. Elaine Aaron's work in her book, Highly Sensitive People, I hope it's people and not persons. I always confuse the two. Um, there's also a quiz uh, with all these different characteristics of HSPs, as they're commonly known. And this quiz is also on our website. So you can just go in and check the characteristics that you think apply to you. And then you'll know where you stand on the scale of um, being an HSP. And when it comes to empaths, I would say empaths and HSPs are quite similar because empaths are also sensitive to all these characteristics that I just mentioned, um, getting overwhelmed easily, being sensitive to emotions, being sensitive to a lot of stimulation, being sensitive to, to bright lights and loud noises and strong smells um, and so on. Um, the one author that I'm familiar with who has written uh, extensively on the subject of empaths is Judith Orloff, MD, and one of her books that I read quite a few years ago, The Empath Survival Guide, was the one that actually introduced me to this world of empaths from a, from a scientific, a neurological point of view. And um, I don't really want to go too much into what's science, what's not science, and blah, blah, blah. I'm coming based on what's my own experience and what is all that I have collected after reading a lot of resources about empaths. Some of those are uh, more scientifically oriented and um, others may not be so, but that's not the core of our issue here. Um, according to um, Judith Orloff, empaths are slightly different, or her definition of empaths is that they're slightly different from HSPs um, in the sense that empaths are also sensitive to the subtle energy systems. And these subtle energy systems are coming more from Eastern traditions. These are energy systems like prana um, and shakti and reiki. And you may have heard of these energy systems. You may believe in them. You may not believe in them. Um, my channel is called Energy Work with Jessica, so I, I guess it's I don't have to explain um, on what side of... Uh, of this uh, plane I stand on. So I do think that uh, I do agree with um, Judith Orloff's perspective that empaths are really in tune with the subtle energy bodies and subtle energy systems. Um, and this is one of those things that are really an ally for us as empaths, especially when we want to discern whether a relationship is uh, going the right way or whether it has run its course and why do we say this let me let me back up a bit so 
if you're an empath, um, you and if you are in tune with the energies around you, then let's say an event is occurring in 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 energy form, and it takes a little bit of time until it's it's transmuted into the physical reality. So I would say. Okay, looking at it in an easier way, let's say that as empaths, we are in tune with what others are feeling. So um, the feeling that they that they have, they may not have actually voiced it, uh, but they have certainly felt it. So as empaths, we're in tune with what they're feeling. And in that sense, if you're friends with someone or if you know someone, an acquaintance or anyone that you have a working relationship with, and this person has started to feel feel something towards you that is not necessarily pleasant then you as an empath are more likely to sense it even before this person expresses their feeling to you in either um, a direct way or a more indirect way so as empaths you're more likely to feel the energy of this um, demeanor of, of these feelings and hence you would get alerted sooner than other people would if things are running their course in a relationship. This is why sometimes it's difficult for empaths to have friendships uh, and to trust themselves versus trusting the other because they get a sense of something going wrong but nothing has actually happened physically uh, so there's a big confusion for us or for empaths that wait am I imagining this am I crazy and you know this question comes up again and again in the course of the life of an empath am I crazy so no you're not crazy and we tend to say I'm, I'm feeling this but I'm not sure if I have any proof and a lot of times the reason why we sense toxic relationships earlier is exactly because of this intuition, because we're tuned into the subtle energy, we can feel it. And the big reason why we can't leave a toxic relationship as soon as we see the first signs appear is because we're not trusting our intuition, because we feel that, wait a second, I feel this, but there's no proof yet, nothing has happened yet, I may be wrong. Because in our world, we focus so much on the physical and the material that we tend to overlook and even undermine the signals that we're constantly getting from the energy or from feelings and our intuition. So we tend to ignore these signals. So we may go on in this relationship, even knowing at an intuitive level that this is not good for us. And then something happens and then you're like, oh shit why didn't I get out earlier? Why didn't I believe myself? Um, what what am I doing? So it's this confusion. And the, I mean, the other, the other thing that tends to happen is that if we are in a relationship with a person um, and all these feelings start coming up, so at a point of this friendship or relationship, it's no longer about the positive, affirming the supportive it suddenly become critical um, edgy um, and we're not really sure but what's really happening is that we're entering into a wound made relationship with the other person and that's a, a term I borrowed from Judith Orloff wound mate um, is when you're bonding based on your mutual emotional and psychological wounds so for example if um, you feel insecure, your wound mate at this point is going to criticize you more often. You'll feel more insecure, will criticize you more often, and the cycle continues, and this wounded relationship um, continues. And the quality of your, of your relationship basically starts deteriorating exponentially at this point. But the key is not to even make it to this point. The key is to have enough confidence in your intuitive feeling about a relationship running its course and really believing the signs um, that empaths tend to get early on when someone starts harboring certain feelings towards you that are more toxic, that are more negative. Um, I call it um, our antenna for, for toxic people or for toxicity in general. Our antenna lights up earlier 
than others because we're noticing the subtle energies and the subtle signs and signals more often uh, than other people. So when to know uh, that it's time to leave this toxic relationship or a relationship that has the potential to turn toxic and that's important to discern. So, you know, when you're an empath, you can sense when it's really time to leave. So you don't want to get into that wound made cycle. And I have I have three three things here that I think are the most important. Um, and when these three uh, elements, when these three factors start showing up in your relationships, then that's the time to start thinking of an exit plan and to leave as gracefully as possible. And the first one of these is when it's jealousy and how does jealousy manifest in a friendship or in a work relationship a jealousy manifests as rejection so let's suppose you have a friend and you spend a lot of time together and at one point uh, the friend or the acquaintance or the co-worker who had time for you suddenly doesn't they start ignoring you um, they start openly refusing uh, to either meet you or to do something for you or they start refusing to do the things that you would normally um, do together. And this is not just someone being busy with their life or something like this. This, this type of conversation has a different edge to it. It's rather like my time is, is important or... I'm too important or um, and they make you feel that so this is rejection with a point of making you feel less than this is a rejection with a point of making you feel less worthy this is not simply someone saying I'm sorry something came up in my life and I'm busy but they're going to make it very pointed and very direct that it's because I am important and you are not important for me so this will manifest in the tone in which they talk to you and what they actually what excuses they give you when they refuse to either see you or talk to you or meet you or show up in any way in your life so that's the first thing okay jealousy that manifests as rejection and the second thing is gossip and this is really interesting because when you're when you're friends with someone, you will, how will you know that someone is actually gossiping about you? People that you mutually know, but people that you don't have any direct contact with are going to act like they know you. So suddenly you show up at a party um, or at an event and um, there are people, they're, they, they seem to be talking about you um, in a way that they know what's going on with you or they show you or they say something that reveals that they know something about you and or they have some assumption of you and you may think oh it's that person that person's really weird this person is assuming something about me but that's not necessarily true it may not be the person it may have more likely been your friend or your acquaintance who has talked about you to that person and in a way that makes that person think, oh, okay, uh, I, I, I know this person, I've heard this about her. And this person who's in the middle, who's just sort of, you know, the conveyor between what your friend or acquaintance has said, uh, he's just, he or she is just conveying this to you without realizing that they're being used in the long con, that they're being used to, as a pawn, to basically make you feel insecure and um that's the point where you know absolutely know that there is gossip about you and as painful as this sounds um um gossip that comes that's close to us that comes from something that's of a personal nature to us a personal detail um something private or intimate that gossip it's obvious when the gossip comes and um, it hurts because those are the parts of us that we tend not to share with people we're not close to. So how do they know in the first place? Somebody we have talked to has told them. And this gossip is done really in a malicious manner um, to put you down, to um, spread some type of story about you that undermines you. So this 
is actually one of the most toxic traits and when this starts happening in your life that's the time when you really really need to put some distance between you and the person um you believe or suspect of of saying these things about you so that's that's the second one and then the third one is basically put down and now it's getting open right the mean comments the sarcasm the blatant discouragement it's getting open it's uh, being communicated to you directly through comments through conversations um, sarcastic put downs and this is the opposite of what um, someone would do uh, in a in a in a healthy relationship in a healthy friendship so if you did do something wrong or if you did offend someone your friend or anyone you work with this person um, would rather come to you and say I was hurt by what you said this person would not start passive aggressively or even aggressively making sarcastic comments um, about you and discouraging you from doing the things you love and discouraging you from, you know, feeling positive in general. So at this point, the undermining has become really direct and um, they will try to make sure that you and your efforts to move forward are sabotaged. And um, when this starts happening, it takes some time before um, it reaches that level where it does actively sabotage you so if even if it's happening in a very um like a small amount like maybe you know once or twice in a call or once or twice when you're out yeah that's still the moment that you know okay that's the time to end this relationship because it's only going to get worse from here healthy friends or in healthy friendships uh People are not going to put you down. They're going to lift you up. No matter what, no matter what mistakes you have made, there's going to be room for forgiveness. There's going to be room for positivity. There's going to be room for letting go. There's not going to be active harm. And a lot of people are going to cover for themselves at this point, especially when you confront them about this meanness or this discouragement they're going to say oh but that's just how i am that's just how i speak you know i do this to everyone fine <laughs> but there's no reason why you have to take it um and that's the third that's the third biggest sign uh when a relationship is running its course and beginning to run its course so to summarize we started with jealousy um that's manifesting uh as um rejection then we had gossip that's when people you don't know directly have an opinion of you or have heard personal and intimate things about you uh, or refer to them um when you tend to run into them and the third one is put downs and discouragement so when these three factors start popping up in your relationship with anyone that is a moment to trust your intuition and trust that empathic transferring and feeling of energy because you know something's up way before and even if these things are very subtle then still that's the best time to start second guessing their relationship and to start protecting yourself having a plan to gracefully move out of that relationship because it will only get worse these type of toxic and manipulative behaviors only escalate and as you grow in your own journey as the light shines even brighter from within you it is going to create these issues with a lot of people who are already insecure they're going to see your progress as a threat to their security which is ridiculous it's ridiculous but they're going to see it they're going to see it that way and these are some of the tactics they're going to use to undermine you so when this starts occurring you know that's the time to leave do not stick around <laughs> um watch out for these signs and believe the signals that you get from your empathic gift um this empathic ability is an ally so let it work for you let it protect you so you don't have to dim the light that is naturally shining from you 
And with that, I'm going to wrap up the third episode of The Light Within Us. Join me again next week and let me know what you think about all of these discussions um, in the comments. And I'll see you soon.